Okay. Uh, next year, uh, going to basically repeat the process because we're under an equip grant, the grower is, uh, and we got to replicate it. So we're going to do that. Uh, but he wants to get a whole bunch more veggies. We're going to work harder on the veggies in the space up here. This is kind of this garden space. We're still going to put 90 inch twin row corn in it. Um, this one, we're going to shuffle a little bit. I'm going to try to get I got, a, I got a lot of thinking to do. I'm going to take serious input from the seed company I'm working with and any other seed companies that might have an interest uh, to make it a better replication and maybe narrow down a little bit. But, but it's, a, it's a really interesting field. And the beauty of it is I get a whole lot of trials and not very much space. And it, you know it's, uh, it's close by and the price is right and all that. Um, what the seed company say when we got done with all of this, they said, look, uh, and some of this kind of everybody knows, or at least I think I know, higher population drives more plant to plant variability. I believe that. I think I've shown that. Our 60 inch rows showed it. I've also said higher population makes it more important to do a good job of planting because the plants are so close together. Uh, you get winners and losers a lot quicker if they're closer together than if they've got they got six inches instead of three inches. What was surprising to me, uh, second ears indicate abundant resources. That was not a surprise, but the seed company people said, uh, hey, it doesn't look like there's a variety factor in the second ear, which surprised me. I would have thought that would have been wired into the, wired into the thing, but apparently if it's just a really happy corn plant, it's gonna go put on another ear or at least try. And, and they, they don't have that as one of their yield strategies because you end up with nubbins or aborted ears. Also, to my surprise, uh, they said, well, really, Bob, you're looking at all this stuff. Why don't you look at 30 inch twin rows? Now, I think there's a guy named Harry Stein that promoted the hell out of twin rows for a number of years. And I don't know that it ever got traction, but and maybe for that reason, there's a lot of 30 inch twin row planter or a few 30 inch twin row planters out there that that should be in the factor. So, okay, that, that's worth it. Uh, field variability uh, trumped everything else. Yep, they said that. And, and you want real reps. They, what they recommended, lower yielding ground is more challenging. Uh, they concur, it's easier to show improvement but you need more replications and you're gonna get more variability. And replications for me are the enemy because that means I got to chew up a lot of space in my little goofy plots that have a way of alienating customers or cooperators. Uh, plots should be on more uniform ground. They said you, they'd rather have a uniform 180 bushel field than a variable 250 bushel field, which I thought was interesting, but it kind of makes sense. Um, and then you base that on yield maps, the soil map, and you know what the history is. Um, I use the words lighter. Some people say better drain. They like lighter soil. They like well-drained soil because they know they're not gonna have water logging problems. And it's less dependent on management processes. That I thought was kind of interesting. I'd much rather plant in lighter soil because I can do a better job with my rig. Uh, next steps, uh, they said, well, your hill thing, Bob, is interesting. And I explained the hill thing in more uh, detail to them. Uh, and what, and, and they said, no, nah, nah, we're not interested in that. What did interest me, the individual ear measurements, they said, no, that's kind of out there. It's hard work. Uh, you can do that if you want. Oh, shit. Uh, but we're not interested. Ignore that word there. Uh, they, they said the little single roll combine is a real game changer. Um, and that surprised me. I'd not had anybody really pick up on that, but the logic is the 20 foot plots that they typically have in seed corn trials, uh, they think are too short. You have too much variability and a lot of that. And quarter mile rows or eighth mile rows are just too long, chew up too much land and you get into soil variability. They really like the idea of a hundred foot plot. 
So if they, they said, oh, well, if we had an extra million dollars laying around, we would do four reps of eight to 10 varieties of 30 inch, 30 inch twin, 60, 60 twin, 90 and 90 inch twins. Um, and a hundred foot roll would be perfect and be careful about the boundaries. Uh, you can study the individual ears if you want, but it's on your nickel, your time. Um, and you gotta have a good simple cover crop. You don't want the cover crop to interact on a plot like this so strongly with the corn that it messes up that you got the, you don't want the cover crop to be one more variable in what the corn is trying to tell you. The cover crop plot is a cover crop plot uh, and don't let the corn, but you gotta have a, you gotta have a cover crop. You're gonna have weeds, period. Um, I've kind of become a grant addict. I'm having a little bit of luck there. Um, if I can find some grant money someplace for this stuff, uh, the seed company be willing to put some money in the, in the kitty to make it happen. Um, so what I'd like to do is return to a high yield environment for my role with yield studies. I'm still keenly interested in growing soil and soil health. So I'm not leaving my low yield environment, but I, I, I don't have, uh, there's just too many variables in the environment I'm in to kind of do the broad brush tests they would like to do. Uh, more professional <laughs> replicated trials with a wide range of corn varieties. And they like the idea of looking at different row spaces. Um, I do get phone calls that says, you know, I'm thinking about getting a different planter, you know, what should I get? <clears throat> so here's my planter for next year. Uh, and I think there's a pretty good chance this plot is going to happen at some level. So it's got four rows of 30 inch corn, four rows of 30 inch twin. Thank you, Harry Stein for that. Four rows of 60 inch corn, four rows of 60 inch twin, four rows of 90 and four rows of 90 inch twin, no hills. And the, the 48 number here is if these were 30 inch rows, this is how it would look. So this is a 120 foot wide uh, plot that has six different corn planters in it, if you will. And I can do, I, I can and have done all of these with my planter, except the 30 inch twin. I don't know if I have that much variability built into it. I may have to double pass plant to get a 30 inch twin. And people, people that have done that say, that, I call that a poor man's twin row planter. Generally, they say it's not a good idea and they don't get good results. So I got, I got a little homework to do there. And so the boxes here are the data points that would be good data uh, out of this plot. So, so basically I would have a hundred foot of this configuration uh, in my data sample. Uh, and then I go through all the replications, do that, then come back, pick these in bulk and then go do these again. And, and, and actually this morning when I was looking at this graph, I thought, you know, I could come in and pick both of these at the same time. I don't know whether I want to do that or not because I'm, I'm losing out on technically a, uh, a, a replication where I got two sets of data instead of one combined. And I'd like, I need, I need some good statistical help on that question because uh, it's about half as much time. So each, what did I do? I have a better graphic. Shit, I had a really nice graphic. That's why I got screwed up. All right. Uh, so if you imagine that 48 uh, rows, this right here is 120 foot wide section. So there's eight or there's six different planter configurations in this little box. And then it runs for a hundred feet long, 120 feet wide, hundred feet long. And so the day I'm planting, let's say I got the planter set up for simple 30 inch rows. I plant a hundred feet, stop, change out the variety, plant another hundred feet, stop, 
change out the seed variety, keep doing that. And then I turn around, then I, so I do all the four row versions, okay, with all, with, and this is uh, 10 sections long and four sections wide, so there's 40 boxes here. It's got all of these row widths configured. There's four replications, you randomize the seed assignment, of course. Um, so there's basically 480 way wagon checks <clears throat> in that field, which is about 12 acres. <laughs> so it's not a lot of corn ground. It's not a lot of yield risk. And frankly, this, this is gonna yield pretty good. Um, and so it's, you know, but it's a it painful thing to try to do. And, uh, and, and you know, it, it might be my whole life all, all spring. I, I think it's a three or four day planting operation, probably a two, the harvest will go pretty well uh, because my rig works so well on that. Uh, and then there's one other variation. If this, is, this, get, this fits nicely in a quarter mile um, roll length. Uh, with some turnaround room and, and all of that, but you could you can get into uh, soil, you know, top, topographical issues and all that. So this is a different variation where you basically break it up and slide them over. It's the same number of plots, just a slightly different arrangement. So I'm thinking that this is something I want to do, and. So what? So when people pick up the phone and call me and say, "Bob, what's your planter recommendation today, and what's your variety replication today?" I'm gonna say, "Give me a year," and then at the end of that year, I'll probably say, "Give me another year," because depending on who pays for this, they may or may not want to share the data, which is one of the challenges of what I do. Having come from a corporate world, if you spend a bunch of money on something, you don't go give it away. Um, on the other hand, this is a non-trivial undertaking, so uh, that's just my dilemma. I am in conversation with my with one of my previous high yield plot collaborators who understands how I think, what I do, what I do wrong, that sort of stuff, and we're working on a plot program for this. Uh, we're looking for money. We're looking for money from the company, and I'd like I'd like to find somebody in academia that's got a grant that they can't figure out how to spend some money. So they would put some skin in the game, and then part of what they get for the skin in the game is it gets to be public domain information, and that's I don't that that may be a negotiation I can't win, but you know we'll just have to see. Uh, and, and a big part of this is the intellectual property considerations. So uh, this will be embedded in a field someplace, all that. Okay, questions. Anybody want to do that plot for me? The other, the other thing about this is if this works, if the, I mean, 10 varieties with six different row configurations and four replications in 12 acres, I mean, there's PhDs written on less data than that. That could be a really nice template that we could hand to most any seed company that says, by the way, this is something you should be doing because other people are doing it. My belief is the only thing that will drive the seed companies to this is when folks that are doing 60 inch roads start telling stories about what works and what doesn't. And the seed companies are going to get some pressure that their salesmen should know something about it other than filling out the order tablets. And I have some really nice friends and relatives that sell seed. Okay. Any questions, comments? Yeah, Almost done. One comment from Zach. Uh, have you ever considered a SIG grant? I applied once. And I think you and I applied together and they told us it was too innovative and nobody would ever do that. <laughs> that's been a yeah. while. Uh, conservation innovation grant you're talking about cig yeah um we that would be the grant rcs i'm mm -hmm. assuming the proposal windows closed about now or no that's usually february i think yeah i um uh, one of the problems is it's pretty late in the it's pretty late in the year for this um but 
I, I, don't, I don't know. We're, we haven't given up, put it that way. We Schaefer, Schaefer would be a good help on that one. And then you'd have to work through your regional office up here. Yeah, I did. I did review most of this with the Blackhawk County uh, Soil and Water Conservation Board here earlier in the week. So uh, they've seen it, heard of it. One more thing. 